Hey Triton and hey everyone that might be watching on YouTube, Alex and Mark here. One more time we're going to do our weekly recap and kind of give everyone a walking note card on what we did this week and what we covered. So this week at Triton we spent working out of what we call our dynamic guard. Uh, this is a position if Mark's on his knees, I'm going to start working my guard. It's a seated guard position that allows for a lot of transitions, hence the name dynamic. Uh, it really doesn't have to do with a lot of speed, a lot of athleticism. It's just the nature of how much movement takes place from this guard. I learned this guard from my friend Leo Kirby, uh, who's a Marcelo Garcia black belt. Uh, credit where credit's due. Hi, Leo. So we're going to talk about the structure and why this is important from here. One of the things I really hate doing is starting off wrestling from our knees. And you see this all the time at jiu-jitsu schools, right? We start out, we lock up, and we're fighting from here. I don't love this a lot. This doesn't really mimic what we do in any setting. It doesn't mimic self-defense, it doesn't mimic competition, and it, it, it doesn't really advance the art at all. What it does is let us push around because neither one of us want to be on the bottom is what this boils down to. So either start from your feet and, and work from takedowns, or someone pick a position, and generally it's some sort of guard. This dynamic guard lets me have a lot of options, and it's a good starting point. You see a lot of people start from here, and we need a plan on what we're going to do from here. So structurally, let's talk about this seated position for a second. I have my feet towards him, my knees towards him, because I'm always wanting to build some kind of barrier. My feet are tight, my bottom leg is tucked in tight to my hips, and my lead leg is tucked in front of it. Don't necessarily like the feet next to each other, because what tends to happen is we start moving, this bottom foot starts to come out. When this bottom foot starts to come out away from my core, he starts to attack it, he starts to isolate it, it becomes very problematic. So, structurally, we like low foot tucked up, high foot over the top. This just kind of, as we start moving, you'll see, keeps this back leg tucked in. My back arm is the key to this position. My back arm is forming a triangle from my hips to my hand back up to my shoulder. This is forming a triangle, sturdiest position in geometry and it's the sturdiest position in jiu-jitsu and I'm building this to maintain my structure. Lastly, I'm going to come in and make contact with him mid lapel, not high, we're not looking for a choke yet, mid lapel, fingers in, thumbs out, thumb up. And I want to find a spot to rest my knuckles on his chest. This is important for a couple of reasons. One, it's going to allow me to have control over his upper body, but more importantly, it's about sensitivity, and this is a great sensitivity training drill. If I don't make connection with him, if I don't connect with him, I have to take in all my information visually. I'm always going to be behind him in movement because he's going to move. My sight has to see that. It has to process it through my brain, and it has to send out messages to my entire body to follow him or track him. I'm always going to be behind him. What this connection does is if I'm sensitive enough to his movement, is it builds me a feeler so I can feel what he's doing. I can feel those subtle shifts in upper body before he moves. Go ahead and start and it allows me to start to counter those before I even have to see them. It's another source of information for me on what my opponent's doing, so it's important to build that. So our base position is here, reaching out, connection with the knuckles, connection on the gi so I have control, bottom leg tight, top leg tight over the top of it, and most importantly, this triangle back here. So once we have this, a couple of things are typical to happen here. A lot of aggressive people like to pressure me over, drive me over, because they perceive this as a weak position. If my structure is correct and adequate, he's going to have a very tough time bowling me over. I have my triangle planted back here to accept weight, and I have this arm straight and supported at the knee. So I'm not pushing him with my muscles that get tired. I'm locking out the skeletal structure, and I'm making him press into the skeletal structure of my arm. It's locked out against this triangle, so it's very difficult to push me over. The next thing that tends to happen is he's going to try and disengage and get away from me. So as he comes back, I can either use this opportunity to transition into something, or I can close the distance. It's very hard for me to transition to an attack from here. So we're going to use the backhand triangle, lift up, and I'm just going to chase him and close this distance. So if he goes back again, I'm lifting the hips and I'm following. Notice the structure in my arms. Go ahead always the same, so I can build that straight arm and I can build my triangle here. Once he can't crush me to the ground and take advantage, and once he can't escape, he'll typically tend to circle. And when he starts to circle, I'm again going to use my position, and I'm going to use the sensitivity I've established here in my hand to feel which direction he's going, and when he starts to move, I'm just going to follow him. You'll notice I'm lifting my hips a little bit, and I'm rotating my whole body. I'm keeping my feet in between me and him, and I'm not trying to drag all of myself across the mat. As he moves, I'm lifting, 
and I'm just readjusting. And this whole time, I'm keeping this triangle in the direction that the force is going to go. So our live drill on this starts to look like he gets to pick what direction he wants to work. Go ahead and go. And my job is just to maintain my distance and keep him from walking around these legs. Good. So once we've established this base or this structure for a dynamic guard, we understand how we're going to play it, what we're going to utilize against different things he might do. We start to look at some of the most realistic things he, he will do. One of the things that happens is he collapses this arm. He tries to push this arm in so he can get on top of me. If I try and use muscle and shove him back out, I'll rarely be successful because he, I, he's got a lot more weight coming in than I can press out with this hand. So as soon as he starts to collapse this arm, I go back to my structure, I disengage, I straighten my arm as I go, I support it on the knee, and I rebuild my structure. The next thing that's likely to happen is Mark's probably going to reach in and start to control my pants. He's going to reach in and try and get this gi control grip. Now he's at risk of running me back and passing my legs. I need to clear this. So the sooner the better, I'm going to use my base, lift my hips, drag my hips out. You'll notice this looks a lot like a standing base. Guys, it's something we do in warm-ups every day. You can't take it for granted. It's important in all these movements in jiu-jitsu. I lift, standing base, and I pull my legs clear. You'll notice my head, my center above him. This lets me have access to his back, lets me have access to angles, gives me a lot of counter options, leaves me in a very good position. So then we put that into the entire drill. So he can try and push me over, try and disengage, he can circle, I accommodate, he at some point reaches in, tries to get my legs, and I'm coming back to this position, and I'm starting to take an offensive mindset. So that's the base structure of this dynamic guard. And we learn a lot. We learn sensitivity, we learn hip control, we learn placement for my open guard. And what we start to do from here is learn transitions into our guards, into dominant positions, and into our submissions. Don't have time to go into all those now, but if you didn't get in, get in. It's some great stuff. We'll work through that in the coming weeks. So anyway, I'm Alex. This is Mark. Thanks for coming in to help out. We'll see you guys next week.